Okay, so in this video, we're gonna be tackling a logo design. Just a heads up, Blender isn't really made for logo design. That's something for Illustrator. If you have Illustrator, you would take your logo and then export it as an SVG and then import it into Blender and then you can extrude it from there. But if you don't have Illustrator, I'm gonna show you a little trick, have a little bit of fun with some logo ideas. Just one particular trick, so let's get into it. So first thing we're gonna add, Shift A, we're gonna add a cylinder. Right on your vertices, bring it all the way down to three and that's where we're gonna keep it for there. I'm gonna scale it up just a little bit. And then in your object settings right here on Z, just bring it down to about as thick as you want your logo to be. It's right about there. I think that's about good. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is add a cube. So add your cube and then in your design, just bring it up like that and then bring it out and then make it about as skinny as you want your cuts to be. I'll show you how that works in just a second and then let's rotate it real quick. So basically we're gonna add an array modifier to this and so we're gonna add cuts. And so this is sort of the angle you want your cuts to be. Whatever you want, this is a creative decision for you. So let's go and add this to the very edge of the triangle, it's so right about there. Now let's add our array modifier to this cube. Add modifier, array, and then it looks like it's in the correct direction. Then let's just up the count until it passes up our design. Now it's cutting out this way, so we can either increase the size of our cube or just do this right here. Looks like the logo is in our cube here, so it's all encapsulated. Now let's click our cylinder, add a Boolean modifier. In the object, click cube, and then nothing happened. So you need to go over to inter intersect difference, and then right up here on the eyeball, click the eyeball in the cube, and now you have your logo right here. So this is pretty cool. Let's go and add some color to it. I'm gonna show you how to make a gradient real quick. So I'm gonna add a plane to it just so we can add some design and lighting. So let's do that. Let's go over to the shading preset and let's click on the look dev view, turn off bloom. And I'm gonna go to my favorite HDRI, the studio HDRI. All right. Now let's add a new shader. Shift A, and we're gonna add a color ramp. So plug the color to the color. Now, we need to add two more nodes. We're gonna add a mapping node right here. Put the vector into the factor, and then a texture coordinate as well. Texture coordinate, plug the generated into the vector. All right, now we're back. So gradients aren't quite as simple as they are in Photoshop or Illustrator, and that's because this is in a three-dimensional space, so it's a little more complicated and janky to sort of fool around with, but they are still really fun to play with. So let's add two colors here. I'm gonna add in the black. We're gonna add sort of a deep purple here, and then we're gonna make this a bright orange. Just a little color theory for you. Let's change to a brighter HDRI so we can see what's going on. So you can kind of see the gradient happening, but it's hard to tell. So in the color ramp, we need to squeeze these two together to make it more obvious. Kind of like that. So now if you don't like the direction where it's going or it's not working on the particular model you're playing with, you can play with the rotation. You can play with all of that to sort of try to change where it's at. You can change the scale as well. All of these are things you can use to change where the gradient is happening on your particular model. So yeah, that's a basic shape for you guys to play with. Have fun with it, and thanks for watching.